Welcome back, everybody. Uh, coming up next, we have Dalibor Richmanica, the principal data warehouse and BI engineer, coming from TeleSign. So give him a hand. So, hi, everyone, uh, and welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Dalibor Richmanica, and I'm a data warehouse business intelligence engineer in TeleSign. So I'm doing some data and uh, analytics stuff in, in my company. Uh, and uh, let's start with the agenda for this talk uh, in introduction part. Uh, I will talk about uh, the goal of this talk. Uh, after that, we will have uh, three main sections. Uh, names of these sections are derived uh, from uh, full name of, of this talk. So the, f the first uh, main section is from an, uh, from an hour to a few seconds. Uh, in this part, I will try to describe use case we were trying to solve. In TeleSign, I will present you old, uh, our old architecture and try to explain why it didn't work. Uh, the second main part is real-time stream data processing, and uh, there will be some, uh, let's say, theory stuff. What is stream processing, difference between batch and stream. And the third the section is with fully managed AWS Kinesis services. I'll present you our new architecture. Uh, and uh, I will talk about uh, technology we are using uh, in, in our new solution. And I hope uh, at the end we will have enough time for Q&A section. So what is the goal here? Uh, in my opinion, there are two main goals. So the first one is to, is to understand what is stream processing and uh, to uh, give you answer on some of the main questions here. So what is stream processing? why uh, we should use it uh, and in which situation we should use it uh, also how it can be implemented and uh, the second goal here is to just a little bit help you uh, to start thinking about use cases in your own companies and what you can do there uh, so uh, telesign uh, is leader in uh, digital identity and uh, programmable communication solution uh, we have a lot of uh, products. Uh, I will not talk about that. I will talk about just one specific product we have. It's SMS Verify, and basically it's about uh, sending SMS messages. Uh, SMS messages like uh, this on this uh, slide. So uh, basically what this message uh, means, uh, it's, it is a part of uh, two-factor authentication process. So. I think uh, every one of you are very familiar with this process. For example, if you want to log in or to register your account on a website, uh, you have to enter your username and your password. But uh, uh, if that website or application uh, has additional uh, two-factor two authentication enabled on that site, uh, you will get uh, verify code uh, via SMS uh, message, and you have to enter that uh, verify code uh, in order to successfully log in uh, into your account. So this is, let's say, a high level of view from uh, user side. But what is happening uh, under the hood? So basically, uh, some website or application en uh, engage telesign or similar uh, companies that sends that SMS uh, to uh, mobile devices. So in this example, uh, for example, uh, TeleSign will be used for that. And uh, we have additional layer here. It's a layer about SMS provider uh, and SMS providers. So we have a few options how we can send that particular message to a mobile device. We can use, in this example, uh, provider A or B or C. Uh, and let's say we want to choose uh, SMS provider B in this particular example. But what is the question here and what can be uh, tricky from, uh, from TeleSign perspective? Can someone of you tell me? So basically, uh, the issue here for, from TeleSign perspective is that we cannot be sure that uh, SMS message is delivered to final uh, mobile device. Uh, th there can be a lot of others, other the, uh, SMS provider here, for example, because we don't know what this particular 
uh, uh, SMS provider is doing. Uh, so uh, although there are integrations between SMS provider and TeleSign, they can uh, forward, for example, their delivery report. So we can use that uh, for some, uh, in order to check metrics about uh, is, is message delivered or not. Basically, it's not the most reliable uh, option. And we have to implement something better uh, in order to be 100% sure if message is delivered or not. And what is that? Uh, with the help of our customers, uh, they can notify us if uh, end user enters uh, the code correctly, if, uh, if uh, end user is uh, uh, logged in successfully, they notify us about that action and generally we call that uh, information, we call it completion record. So when we get completion record, we can be sure that uh, SMS trans transactional transaction is successful. And this is just one example how, how uh, it can be implemented. Uh, and uh, one example, what we are doing. Uh, so for example, uh, we have to send nine uh, SMS messages and uh, all providers, uh, imagine that all providers can send messages to all countries. So provider A can send messages to Serbia, Germany and USA, the same for B and same for C. But imagine that we have a current setup where we want to use SMS provider A only for Serbia, B for Germany and C for USA. And we send uh, three, three SMS to A, three to B and three to C provider. And we are waiting for completion records. So in this particular example, after we for example, from provider E, we got two completion records from B3 and for C1. We got something like this, analysis like this. So with this very simple analysis, we can uh, conclude that uh, completion rate for provider A is 66, for B uh, 100, and for C 33% uh, of uh, successful completion rate. So what is our goal? Our goal is, of course, to, to get these green, uh, green values. And uh, for example, we can, uh, we can see that this provider C is uh, not good enough. And uh, since it's not good enough, we can get this uh, action point. So why, why to use S SMS provider C for USA, which has this low completion rate? Instead of that, we will use uh, provider B for, U for USA. And that there is nothing wrong with this. This is just simple analysis. But the issue is in the next slide. So using this old uh, traditional architecture, we can see that from the left uh, side, we have uh, two main data sources, MSQL database as source for uh, tr uh, SMS trans transactions and Elasticsearch for our completion records. We load that data to uh, SQL Server da database that acts as data warehouse. We transform that data, load it to the cube and in that particular moment, uh, analysis uh, can be done. But the main issue here is this end-to-end -end latency. So end-to-end uh, -end latency here is from half an hour to, to one hour. So imagine again this analysis and imagine that uh, our provider C uh, has been delivering messages for uh, half an hour and after half an hour, we are aware of that something is wrong. Uh, so generally, we want to change that. And we, we wanted to change that. We wanted to have very low latency here so our business user can react very, very fast. And this is a slide from the Gartner where 
where can says us uh, where we used to be. So obviously we we used to be in this traditional batch batch uh, business intelligence section. Where we, where we wanted to be, we wanted to be in this actionable or predictive sections. So we wanted to uh, decrease our latency to to a few seconds. It is good enough for for our business. And what's worth noting here is uh, uh, 10 years ago to implement something like uh, this to have a uh, few second latency was very hard, very difficult, very complex and very expensive. But with the rise of uh, new technologies, uh, new open source technologies, new cloud technologies, now it's, this is reality. So we started, we started our, our own investigation, how we, how we can do that. And now the story about stream processing. In the rest of the talk, I will use this term stream, stream processing. So uh, when I say stream processing, uh, it, it, it impl implies uh, it's real time, it's data. So, so that's it. Uh, what is that? It refers to continuous processing of continuous stream of data. So what does it mean? There is no some scheduled batch operations. There is no, OK, I, uh, I have one table or one file. I will process that in one in one hour. After that, uh, uh, I'm ready for nal for analysis or something like that. And if, if new new data arrives, I will again schedule my job. I will again execute that job, and so on and so on. So, re so there is nothing about that. This is continuous processing uh, of real time data. It means uh, if you want to think about that, uh, we have to f to think about that just as. Uh, I will program, program my application, I will deploy it, and it will work forever. So there is no scheduling, nothing about that. And main use cases, it's event-driven applications. You can see on the slide some of the, of some of the example, also data analytics application where you can store your results of stream processing into some key value database so it can be uh, can be analyzed uh, from some real time and live uh, reports or dashboards. And this uh, last example, data pipelines, it is about streaming ETL processes. For, for example, you can output your results uh, to your data lake or data warehouse for downstream consumptions. So what is different side? I talked about that. Uh, I think it's it's very simple to know what are the difference. The, the main difference difference is about latency. So if you want scheduled batch operations, you will have probably latency um, uh, from minutes to hours to days. Uh, and the, one of the basic example you you have you can have uh, ETL jobs daily or schedules in, in the night. Uh, and uh, this is something different. Latencies, in some cases, about uh, milliseconds or, or seconds. And this this is how one usual uh, stream processing architecture uh, look like. Uh, from on the left side, we have real time data sources, uh, so it can be transactions, logs, uh, and so on and so on. And those events uh, are st are stored in event store. I will use this term, uh, event store. Although other although other terms can be used, for example, event streaming platform, message event broker, and so on. And one of the main technologies that can be used uh, are Kafka, Kinesis, and so on and so on. And this layer is ingestion layer, so. So events are stored there and ready for immediate consumption. And uh, the consumer on this slide, it's a stream processing engine. Uh, also, all the other terms can be used, for example, stream analytics, event stream processing, and so on and so on. And we have two options how we can do that. We can use native libraries. For example, Kafka has its own, has its own consumer library. Kinesis 2 and so on, and uh, we, or we can use stream processing framework 
uh, robust framework uh, like Flink, sparse streaming, and so on and so on. So after that, results uh, from this part stream processing engine can be stored again in event store or some database, NoSQL, object storage, uh, and similar. So why this uh, stream processing can be hard? Uh, because uh, it's not the same as, as batch processing. And uh, uh, probably all, all of us here know what is batch, process, batch processing, and we are doing that uh, for a long time. But uh, when we are talking about stream processing, some other things are very important. Uh, it's ordering, it's partitioning, it's scalability, it's fault tolerance, it's reprocessing, it's some advanced stuff like time window triggers out of order data, state man management, and so on. Any question up to now? Okay. And the last, and in my opinion, the, the most interesting part with fully managed AWS Kinesis services, it's a, it's a part of technology and our new solution. Uh, so what is AWS Kinesis? It's a bundle of services, bundle of four services, data stream, data analytics, data firehose, and video streams. Uh, the first two are used uh, in our new architecture regarding this talk and new uh, and uh, this use case. Uh, the third one, Kines uh, Data Firehose, is used in TeleSign, but for some other processes, some batch processes. And the the last one is Kines Video Streams. It's just media service, so we are not using that. So. Uh, what is Amazon Kines data streams? Uh, it falls uh, in this event store uh, part or component from this general architecture. It's highly, avail highly available distributed append log, append log uh, service in the AWS. So basically uh, it's uh, ingestion layer we can uh, ingest uh, our events, uh, real-time events from other AWS services, microservices, logs, sensors, and so on and so on. And uh, after the events are stored there, they are uh, very easily, they can be very easily uh, consumed by some other AWS services or custom application immediately. So. As I said, it's an event store technology that is uh, Amazon Kinesis data services technology that is similar to Kafka, for example. There are a lot of differences, but we can say that use case uh, for using uh, Kafka and Kinesis is, is very similar. Uh, how this uh, service, is, service is implemented? So uh, one data stream uh, which is similar to one uh, Kafka topic for, for those of you who, who are familiar with Kafka. Uh, has a lot of shards or can have a, a lot of shards that are very similar to partitions. And uh, every, every shard has its own limitation regarding uh, throughput, regarding read and writes. Uh, so if you want to scale your application, you have to you know, change number or number uh, of shards, uh, and uh, also there is uh, integration with our with other uh, AWS services. So it's about Kinesis Data Stream, and the next slide is about data analytics. Basically, what is data analytics? It's a set of three uh, different services. Uh, the first one is is uh, main services. The, the other two are just for exploratory analysis uh, and development. So if you want to deploy something uh, in the in the cloud in AWS, you will use this first uh, first option. And uh, this service does this service uh, for, falls under the stream processing stream processing engine. And again, you can see that from the left side, you, you can have Amazon Kinesis data 
data stream as a source or Kafka or something like that. Uh, in Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics, we are processing those, those events and uh, we can store uh, those events again in Amazon Kinesis Data Services or Amazon Kafka, S3 and some other output. So what is Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics for Apache Flink? Basically, it's a hosted uh, Apache Flink uh, it's fully managed the Apache Flink in the in the cloud, so it brings it brings us uh, main and the most important things that cloud can uh, can uh, brings brings us. Uh, there is no server to manage. Uh, we will pay only for the uh, resources we are using. Uh, we have native uh, connection, native connection and integration with other services. It it can scale very easily, and so on. And this is how our new architecture uh, look like. On the left side, uh, we have our on-premises uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, it's part of our, let's say, SMS platform, for example. And those messages from RabbitMQ using Kinesis Publisher, it's our custom application. Uh, those uh, messages or events from RabbitMQ uh, are transferred to AWS. Firstly, in this ingestion layer in Kinesis data streams, and uh, when data is, is uh, in Kinesis data streams, Kinesis data application based on Apache Flink uh, is processing that data, load that data to PostgreSQL. Uh, it's also RDS services on AWS, and uh, live reports are created in our custom application uh, and uh, users can query that data can query that data very easily also aws cloudwatch is used for monitoring and logging purposes and the most important thing about this new architecture is that with this architecture and with this uh, solution our end to end latency is to, uh, three to four seconds. So using this approach, we managed to achieve what, what we wanted. And uh, these are our two main applications, two Flink applications or Kinesis Data Analytics applications. So the, the first one is here. Uh, it's it's relatively a uh, simple application that just reads data from uh, our uh, SMS transaction Kinesis data stream, aggregate that on based on uh, our tumb tumbling window on one minute or so some other dimensionalities and load that data to this aggregated SMS transaction table. And uh, the second application is, is much complex. Uh, it's uh, basically join between SMS part, SMS transaction, transactions part, and completion records. So we have to join it basically on the fly uh, to aggregate that data, uh, again, based on a uh, tumbling window from one minute, uh, and there other dimensionalities like country, operator, and so on and so on, and store that data again in new table on RDS post. So now you, you know our architecture, but you don't know what is under the hood. So Apache Flink uh, framework, stream processing framework is, is used. Basically, you have to write your code uh, to package to, to the jar file just to upload to AWS to set some basic parameters. And that application is deployed and uh, is doing a job. So the name Flink derives from German word Flink, uh, which means fast or quick or, or agile. Uh, it's written in Java, in Scala. Uh, it's uh, used by uh, the biggest tech companies in the world, like uh, Netflix, eBay, Uber, Lyft, and so on and so on. Although uh, this Apache Flink 
supports both model streaming and and, and batch. Uh, I will in this talk talk about just streaming part. Uh, so if you want to try batch processing with Flink, you can do, do that. And uh, what makes Flink Flink? What makes Flink fast? Uh, those are all features that are natively supported. Uh, it's very robust system, so uh, all complex thing about uh, stream processing, like out of order events, uh, user defined state, time, uh, custom windows, and so on, uh, is uh, supported. Also, uh, it's low level latency framework. Uh, it's, it can support very high throughput. It, uh, scale, it scales very easy. Uh, it's fault tolerant system. Uh, Flink has its own checkpoints, so in, in the case of error, uh, it can start from those checkpoints. Uh, exactly one semantic is, is supported. Uh, there are a lot of uh, integrations, so you can use a lot of sources and, and the destination destinations. There are different API libraries. Uh, its uh, state is, is manageable in, in, uh, in very good way. So those features uh, makes uh, those, those features make Flink Flink Flink, and uh, you can try it. Uh, you can see what uh, what is capable for. And this is how uh, data flow regarding code can uh, look like. Uh, at the beginning, we are defining our source. After that, we we uh, we are doing some transformations. In this example, it's map. After that, it's key byte, time, and some basic analytics fu analytics function like sum. And after that, we are defining our sync or our destination. So we want to uh, output our data to 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 the destination. And uh, what uh, options? Uh, do we have? Uh, so, as I said, there are uh, basically three uh, APIs and uh, different between those APIs and how we can write code uh, is uh, about uh, uh, abstractions. So, the, the high-level uh, abstraction, abstraction API is stream uh, SQL API and you can see we can just write uh, SQL-like code in order to transform our, our data. Uh, the next API is data stream, so we can use something like this. And the lowest level is process function, where you can you can write your code uh, in in very uh, detail, detailed way. So there is no this uh, join or this uh, sum. So you have to do it. Uh, on your own to program that uh, manually, but when you when you are on this level, uh, generally you can see how powerful this tool is, and we are using process functions in order to join our uh, SMS uh, transactions and our completion records. Uh, so we have some specific uh, business logic in order to do that. Uh, so in that. In that use case, uh, we had to uh, take care about uh, uh, complex and advanced uh, stuff that uh, that stream processing uh, can bring us. So that's it. Uh, I'm very happy uh, with uh, time and with the pace. So we have one minute, uh, one and a half minute to, to your question. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, the the main reason is about AWS. To, to be honest with you, so in the in the moment we started to work with that with that uh, um, Kafka uh, were not uh, in uh, AWS. So this. Particular services uh, you can you can see you can uh, you could see in my my slides about uh, Amazon MSK. It's generally managed Kafka. 
on AWS, but in that moment, uh, I think it was uh, in a public preview op uh, option or something like that. So we chose to use uh, in that moment, uh, um, let's say native uh, event store that is in that moment, in that moment it was uh, Amazon uh, Kinesis data stream. But nothing wrong with, with Kafka at all. Although I didn't uh, work a lot with that technology, I know that is most used technology uh, probably in the world regarding this event streaming platform. So, other questions? No, no, I, yeah, I forgot to tell you that uh, you can deploy Flink uh, in various ways. The first one, you can, I can deploy it and uh, install in my local PC. Also, uh, cluster uh, are possible like Kubernetes, Yarn, and so on and so on. And the third option is this, what we used, uh, like managed services in, in cloud. Uh, we didn't try that. So the first option for us was to be in cloud and uh, we didn't want to uh, manage services uh, to play with, I don't know, Kubernetes and so on. So uh, in that particular moment, we just wanted to be focused on uh, writing code, writing jar packaging, jar application, and uh, deploy it very easily. Thank you again. Thank you, Dalibor.